We are swinging straight to the Volta region. We are going specifically to the Keta constituency where the National Democratic Congress is cautioning its members against a skirt and blouse campaign and voting ahead of the December 7 elections. As the election campaign heats up in the constituency, there are concerns about the conduct of some individuals who are still aggrieved over happenings during the party's last parliamentary primaries and are alleged to be moving around the constituency, urging voters to vote against the parliamentary candidate. So we'll, in the next few minutes, um, interact with uh, Faisal Abdul Idris, who is our correspondent uh, in the Volta region. Before we go to him now, okay, so I'm told he has joined us. Faisal, a very good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, what exactly is accounting for the concern by the party? Uh, we know that they are asking people to vote skirt and blouse. What exactly are these um, underlying concerns? Yeah, Martin, uh, the campaign activities in the Keta constituency uh, are hitting up with both uh, the NDC and the MPP intensifying their campaign. But we are told also that there are some individuals who are also campaigning as independent candidates. Uh, it is imagined now that a number of these persons, including some members of the NDC, are going around the constituency telling people to vote John Mahama and then vote for any other person other than the Member of Parliament for the area, who is the NDC's parliamentary candidate. In the 2020 election, a similar concern emerged. We were told that uh, persons who were found culpable were punished by the party. But let us imagine again that these individuals, even now uh, more in their numbers, are moving around the constituency, mm -hmm. campaigning against the MP, who is the NDC's parliamentary candidate, for a number of reasons. Uh, some uh, are linking it to the last. Uh, parliamentary primaries held by the NDC, persons who are uh, aggrieved for one reason or the other that their candidate did not win the election. Some of these persons are identified to be those who are going around the constituency campaigning against uh, the NDC's parliamentary candidate. The MPP, on the other hand, we are told, are also campaigning sketch and blouse uh, with the notion that John Mahama is likely to win the election. And so they are telling constituents who automatically they believe. Uh, the constituency is an NDC seat, and so they believe that a large number of the people will be going for the NDC, and so they are urging them to vote for John Mahama, but not to vote for uh, the NDC's candidate, but rather the NDC's candidate. So this is exactly uh, the concern here in Qatar. The party has conducted its internal elections. When elections are over, all those who contested have to come together and then make peace among themselves and then rely, or rely with a winning candidate. So those who intend voting skirt and blouse, to the best of my knowledge, they, they need to come, the party need to call them, or the regional executive and the constituency need to meet, call them to order now. You know, Qatar as a whole has a, 90, has a target of 90, 95% for John Jamani Mahama. We are targeting 92% for uh, uh, Honorable uh, Kwame Jolie Gakpa. We need Gakpa's votes to rise from what, uh, what we had in 2020 election for, for the president to, uh, um, to appoint him to any of the state institutions as board chairman or, or board member. It has become a norm for some youths in the party who have engaged themselves in voting skirt and blouse. And been detecting that by the executive committees of the party, we have put up uh, measures in place to deal with anybody who will be found culpable in doing that. And the thing is, this time we need to come on board as all members of the party in order to give the party a resounding victory come 7th December 2024. Therefore, I am entreating every youth in the party to take it upon themselves to work tirelessly for the party, to vote massively for the party. Whoever thinks of engaging himself or herself in voting skirt and blouse will not be spared when caught in the act. So we just want to entreat everybody to vote, vote massively, regardless of whatever differences we have as party members. We should bury those differences and work for the party to come to victory. It's interesting what that last uh, person said, that whoever is caught voting skirt and blouse will not be spared. How will you know in the first place if the person voted skirt and blouse? But we still have a correspondent with us. How about the leadership of the party? What exactly have they been saying regarding this concern of uh, the threat of voting skirt and blouse? Yes, I spoke to the constituent chairman who told me that uh, for them as leadership, they are working hard to unite the party ahead of the December poll. Several reconciliatory 
meetings were held right after the parliamentary primary, and that they thought that that would have put to bed the differences. But uh, now that this is emerging, he is stressing the call for uh, unity. Uh, mm -hmm. The last time we met one of the candidates uh, who actually contested the primary, Dr. Sunami Jokoto, who came up publicly to uh, show his support for the parliamentary candidate and urge anybody who associates with him to support the parliamentary candidate. The same for the meeting across board for uh, all other persons who contested the last primary. Then, him pointing to the fact that, of course, they are aware that the MPP, on the other hand, is also campaigning kept in blood. And so they are urging party members not to fall for that. Let me tell you also that across the voter region, this is a large concern. So when the national chairman of the party uh, told the region this very week that just ended, he spoke about cat and blouse across every constituency that he went, telling the party members that it is even against the party's constitution for anyone to go out of the line to campaign for any other candidate other than the party's parliamentary candidates. Memories. We've been preaching unity, unity. And where we have gotten to, the fact is that we need a united front in order to prosecute this agenda of winning 2024 elections. So we have made this call several times. And today, at the launch of our campaign, we heard the Dr. Senalu Jokutu, the main contender of the incumbent MP, making the same call. So I will also want to add my voice that we have come to a time that we must, as people of the NDC, have one focus. We should all vote properly. There is no skirt and blouse in this matter. We need to vote for uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama number no. 8. And in Qatar, the only MP and the only candidate we are presenting is Honorable Jujoli Gakpe. Nobody should deceive you that vote for this one and vote for that. I want to remind everyone who is the true NDC that the MPP, they are just business people. The candidate at, in Qatar here, they have just, I mean, entered into some agreement with the uh, MPP gurus in Accra. They just want to get some votes in order to get whatever that has been promised them. They don't have at, us at heart, our development, our anything positive is not none of their business. Right, so, um, Faisal, how about the Member of Parliament himself, uh, Honorable Gakpe? How does he feel about all these happenings? Yes, the MP says not really bothered. Uh, he feels uh, the battle on December 7 is the loss. Uh, he has been telling us that over the last four years, since this first term, he's done enough for the people of Keta to return him to Parliament. So he's very confident winning the December 4. Those who are going around doing that, they are not God. God, <laughs> the God I serve will surely deliver me. And what are we looking for is to impart on the society. Basically, it's about politics. Competition is very healthy. So when you go into internal politics, at the end of the day, we all need to come together as one and fight this government, this corrupt government, who is so deliver. So for me, I'm doing my part. And by his grace, I will win. And I will surely win your mama will win in my condition. And I'm going through even my achievement. I mean, myself, I was even shocked that I was able to do a lot like this within four years. What are we talking about? There are communities, 13 communities, over 200 years. They don't have electricity. But now we are extending electricity to them. And it's a cost sharing project. We build a new school building in RC in Anyako, as well as Angwa Fiara. When it comes to health, you know, an authority on health that put about 1,000 apprentices program in place. I mean, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I, I can name and continue naming them. And the individual people we have helped medically, pay their medical bill, we have put over 400 people on scholarship. It's a lot, within four years. My simple message to all is tell a friend to tell a friend that 7th December, everybody should actually go to the pool early and cast their vote because we are doing Operation 95%. That's what we are. We are set in for Qatar. And the Qatar is a, that's where the end spirit, the spirit of end lives in Qatar. So we need to do the need for, to redeem our image as well as to make sure victory is ours. 
All right, so that will be it uh, for the constituency watch, specifically the Keta constituency. Um, Faisal Abdul Idris is our man who was helping us dissect the constituency properly to get a sense of what's happening there politically uh, now that both parties have launched their campaign, which is in full flight.